Good day everyone! I am Kyle Patrick Ricabar, your student nurse from the University of Iloilo. In this video, I'll be demonstrating on how to transfer patients and residents. We will discuss getting ready, safety considerations, and how to transfer a person from bed to a wheelchair. During transfers, you will need to keep your patients and residents safe while at the same time protecting yourself against injury. By developing competence and assisting with transfers and by practicing good body mechanics, you will increase the chance that everyone will come through the procedure safely. Preparation that is getting ready to manage your work in a manner that is safe, helpful and efficient is the key to successful healthcare. No matter what tasks you'll be performing during your shift, whether those tasks are planned or unanticipated, you will benefit from a careful preparation. Begin each interaction with patients or residents by performing these steps. First, wash your hands. Gather all needed supplies. And knock before entering the person's room. Introduce yourself using your name and title. And greet the person by name, remembering that a friendly greeting help establish a port. Carefully identify the persons adhering to your facility's approved method. Explain to the person the procedure you're about to perform and make sure the person understands before you begin. If necessary, show visitors outside the room where they can wait and provide privacy by closing the door or curtains. And then, throughout the procedure, see to safety using the proper body mechanics and following all the safety precautions for equipment use and infections control. Here are some additional getting ready steps you should take whenever you transfer a patient or a resident. Before you start a transfer, or even a simple one, plan the transfer. Ask the nurse or physical therapist about any limitations for the person or the resident or the patient has and what recommended transfer method is. Get help from others if necessary, especially with heavy lifting. Consider using assistive equipment such as transfer belt or mechanical lift. Make sure all wheels are locked on beds, stretchers, and wheelchairs to prevent equipment from rolling out from under the person. Lastly, move furniture out of the way before you start. Safety Considerations no matter how thoroughly you carry out your getting ready steps, you must still pay close attention to safety during the transfer. Unfortunately, accidents are common during transfers, with potentially serious consequences. But, if you follow a set of safety guidelines, accidents can be minimized or even avoided altogether. Keeping the patient safe To keep patients safe and residents safe during transfer procedures, follow your plan whether you're working alone or with assistance. Remember to give the person's clear instructions and encouragement throughout the transfer. Make sure the person leads with her strong side if possible. Make sure the person's clothing doesn't interfere with transfer and that shoes provide support and have enhanced skin soles. Half unsteady people grasp your arm or the arm of the chair for support. Do not allow the persons to hold you around your neck. To help support the person, place your hands either on the transfer belt or behind the person's upper back. Do not place your hands under a person's arm speed to help support her because if the person falls, she may be injured when you lift up as she is falling down. It's important to know that some patients or residents may have a medical conditions that make it dangerous to use transfer belt on them. For example, a transfer belt should not be applied to a person who is recovering from abdominal surgery. Transfer belts are also not used with people with a certain heart disorders. If you are in doubt about using a transfer belt on a patient or resident, ask the nurse. Observing body mechanics and back safety. The key to you whenever you transfer a person and another great way to prevent injury to patients and residents is to observe good body mechanics. Body mechanics are the way you align, balance, and coordinate your movements and there is as easy as ABC. A for alignment, 
B for balance, and C for the coordinated movement. Think of the A or the alignment as the good posture. Keeping good alignment, the good posture lessens strain on your joints and muscles. Specifically, good alignment keeps your back in a neutral position. B or balance involves a wide base of support and low center of gravity. When you're standing, the base of support is your feet. Separating your feet makes your base of support broader. Your center of gravity is your torso, the heaviest part of the body. Bending your knees puts the center of the gravity lower, closer to your base of support. This also takes strain off your back. See your coordinated body movement. Uses the weight of your body to help with the movement. This might be as simple as straightening your knees, allowing the momentum of your movement to assist you in your task. During a typical workday, you are likely to assist with transfers many times. And because transferring consists in large part of lifting, you will risk injury to your back if you don't use proper technique. And back injuries can be painful. Moreover, they can be serious enough to end your career. You see, the muscles of your back are not designed to lift weight. That's why you see competitive weightlifters using their leg muscles than their arms and shoulders. In other words, they use good body mechanics, and so should you. Additional safety considerations. When transferring, you will vary the assistance you provide depending on the person's ability to help with the transfer. That is the person's ability to bear weight and whether the person can bear weight in one leg or two. Perhaps you will only need to provide a steadying hand or you may totally lift the person from one place to another. When helping a person to transfer, you must consider all the factors that affect the person's weight and bearing ability. For example, surgery involving one or both legs may limit the person's ability to bear weight, as well a leg paralysis due to a stroke or other injury. In short, know your patient or resident. Never assume anything about the person's ability. Before proceeding, make sure you have checked to see what type of assistance the patient will require. And then, use proper equipment to assist with your transfer according to the specific need of the patient. It can be transfer belt or mechanical lift. A transfer belt is never used to lift a person who cannot bear weight. A person who is unable to bear weight should be moved with a mechanical lift device. For safety, make you have been trained in the use of these devices before you use them. Finally, you will complete your attention to safety when during the transfer. Tell the nurse if the patient is complaints of dizziness, shortness of breath, chest pain, a rapid or irregular heartbeat or sudden head pain. Also, when he or she complains, a pain that she or she tries to bear weight and this is new. When you observe any changes in the person's usual grip, strength, or ability, a usually cooperative person refuses to participate. And lastly, the equipment is not working properly or is broken down. Transfer a patient from bed to wheelchair. To transfer a person from bed to a wheelchair by yourself using a transfer belt, begin as usual by gathering your supplies, which in this case are transfer belt, safety belt, lap blanket, and since we have no chair, I mean wheelchair, we have to use the chair. Lower the bed to its lowest position. Raise the head of bed as tolerated. Then make sure the bed's wheels are locked for safety. Fun fold the top linens to the foot of bed. Now, position the wheelchair next to the bed, facing the foot of the bed. If possible, brace the wheelchair against the wall or solid piece of furniture to keep it in place. Lock its wheels and position the foot rest out of the way. Help the person to move toward the side of bed where the wheelchair is located. To do this, first have the person roll over onto her side facing the side of the bed where the wheelchair is located. Have the person flex her knees and position her arms as shown to enable her to prop her body up and push off the bed. Now, 
ask the person to rise to a sitting position by using the elbow of her bottom arm to raise her upper body while pushing against the mattress with her other hand. Advise the person to allow her legs to swing over the edge of the bed while you help guide her into an upright position. Next, allow the person to dangle or rest in this position for a few minutes before helping her to stand up. This helps equalize blood flow after a person has been lying down for a long period of time. Make sure the person is sitting squarely in both buttocks with knees apart and both feet flat on the floor. The person's arm should rest alongside her side. A note of caution. If the person is rushed through this step or not allowed to rest at all, she may become dizzy and fall while attempting to stand, so allow her to sit for a several minutes before proceeding. Observe the person for the signs of dizziness or fainting as you position yourself in front of her. She so can offer assistance in case she loses balance. And remember, to ask the person if she feels dizzy or faint. If she does, assist her back to a supine position. Next, help the person to put on her shoes or slippers. For safety, make sure the clothing doesn't interfere with transfer. When the person is ready, apply the transfer belt around their waist over top of all clothing. Buckle the belt in front. Before you tighten the belt, turn it so the buckle is off center, perhaps even off to the side. Tighten the belt and check for fit. It should be snug, but you should be able to slip your fingers between it and the person's waist. Next, assist the person to the place she is going. In this example, to the wheelchair, help the person to stand by facing her and having her put her hands on the edge of the bed. Make sure her feet are flat on the floor. Then, have her lean forward. Grasp the belt at each side using an underhand grasp to the safety. Position your feet alongside the person's feet. Flexing your knees, your chins will against the person's chins. This technique helps to block the person's feet and keep her knees from buckling as she stands up. Have the person push down on the bed with her hands and stand on the count of three. Continue to block the person's feet and knees with your feet and knees. Help the person to turn by pivoting on a stronger leg toward the chair. This will allow the person to grasp the arm of the wheelchair. Pull on the transfer belt as you straighten your knees. Remember to keep your back straight. Support the person in a standing position by holding the transfer belt or by keeping your hands on her shoulder blades. Make sure the backs of the person's legs touch the edge of the chair. Continue to assist the person with turning until she's able to grasp the other arm rest. Then, gently lower the person into the wheelchair by bending your hips and knees. Make sure the person's buttocks are at the back of the chair and that person is comfortable with good body alignment. Now, remove the transfer belt Position the person's feet on the footrest of the wheelchair. Buckle the wheelchair safety belt. If one was ordered, and cover the person's lap and legs with lap blanket if desired. But make sure the lap blanket does not drag on floor. Position the wheelchair according to the person's preference. And then, wash your hands. And that's it for this video, and I hope you've learned something. Again, this is Kyle Patrick Kikabar, your student nurse from the University of Iloilo. Thank you.